Dr. Marty Fenserchive, County of Santa Clara Testing and Vaccine Officer. We will begin the press conference in English and American Sign Language. We will then transition into question and answer section. We will, after that, we will move into statements from the podium in Spanish, Chinese, Tagalog, and Vietnamese. Without any further ado, I welcome to the podium Dr. Sarah Cody. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm Sarah Cody, the Health Officer and Public Health Director here in Santa Clara County. Uh, we're here today, we want to uh, make an announcement and share with the public regarding what we're finding uh, in terms of the variants of concern, the SARS-CoV-2 variants of concern. These are uh, strains of the virus that have emerged in various places in the world and we have now documented are circulating here in our county. So all three, or actually all four of the variants of concern as they've been defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are here in Santa Clara County. Uh, we've had the variant B117 from the United Kingdom circulating here uh, for, for some time, and then the numbers reported to us are beginning to pick up. This variant is more, it spreads more easily, it's more transmissible uh, as compared uh, to uh, the, the regular SARS-CoV-2 virus. We also have had a handful of cases of the South African variant and one report of P1, which was the variant that was first uh, identified both in Brazil and Japan. So this is important to know because we've documented them, the numbers are beginning to pick up. And right now we're in a race between the variants and the vaccine. We have some data regarding the variants and how effective the vaccine is, some but not all. But the top line message is you are far more protected if you're vaccinated than if you're not. And the more people that are vaccinated in our county and in our community, the safer we all are. So what does this mean? This means that we're back in a bit of a precarious place as far as our collective ability to curb this pandemic. It is spring, it is a beautiful day, we all have cabin fever, we all want to get out, we all want to get back to our lives, but we can't do that quite yet. We can't do that quite yet. So I'm calling on everyone, every one of us, to continue to wear our masks whenever with anyone outside of our household. That includes people who are vaccinated, okay? I also urge everyone, please don't travel unless you really have to. We're not quite there yet. We've gotta give it just a little bit more time. Some people have to travel, go ahead but wear your mask and make sure that when you come back to the county that you quarantine, that you stay away from others. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Fenstersheib who will give a quick update on the vaccine supply and vaccination here in our county. Thank you, Dr. Cody. Good morning, everyone. So we did get our notification of what we will be getting for next week, what will be arriving next week for our vaccines. And um, it's the total number, which is not including Kaiser or Palo Alto Medical Foundation, is 71,900 doses. How does this compare with last week? Last week, we got just over 58,000 doses. So we did get an increase this week, which is good. Most of it, most of the increase that the state got, which again was passed on to us, um, was for the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So that's that's good because that's the one shot and done 
situation. You get one shot and you're, and you're finished. Um, so we're happy to see that we got more vaccine. However, it's still not enough. Um, we're doing about one third of our capacity in this county. So we continue to need more vaccine, but we're happy to see at least a little bit of an increase. When we look at our dashboard to see how we're doing in this community, about a third, a little more than a third of residents that are eligible, those are 16 and older, have been vaccinated with at least one dose, so that's good. Those that completed the whole series um, are about 20%. So one in five people are totally done with the series of vaccine, but as Dr. Cody mentioned, we really need to get people vaccinated. We know that there is a limiting factor of how much vaccine we have, um, so again, people need to just continue to check the, all of the websites and make sure that the, when, when it is your turn, that you find an appointment and get vaccinated. Today, April 1st, opened up the um, vaccine eligibility yet again to include 50 years of age and older. Um, so that will be added to all of our eligibility at the clinics. Um, that equals a lot of people. I think I mentioned at one time, at one time previously that it was um, about 370,000 more people, but probably a little less because some of those people already fit into some of the other categories. But still adding a lot of people that we don't have vaccine for now. So please everyone be patient. And as Dr. Cody said, please protect yourself because we do not want the variants um, to cause a problem um, with people that have not yet been vaccinated or even develop additional variants because the more the vaccine uh, the more that the, that the virus is allowed to replicate, the more chance there is for additional muta mutations and additional variants. So again, be patient, continue to check the website, our website, sccfreevax.org, and um, you'll find an appointment hopefully, if not next week, in the next couple of weeks. We are told that the vaccine supply should increase uh, by the end, middle or end of April and well into May for, for, uh, for sure. Thank you. We'll now open up for questions in English. Please identify your questions for. We will call on everyone individually. We'll start with KCBS. So this is a race between the variants and the vaccine because the more opportunity that the virus has to circulate, the more opportunity it has uh, to take on mutations and to change. So we've already seen a few variants of concern emerge. And we, what we want to do is get our population uh, here and really globally to get vaccinated as quickly as possible to reduce that opportunity. The trends that we're seeing here in Santa Clara County are somewhat similar to the trends in our Bay Area region. And that is after uh, really good progress and, and consistent declines in positivity rates and case rates since the first week in January, we are now seeing our case rates flatten. And in some cases, a, some indication that they're beginning to tick up. So we may have gotten as low as we're going to go. We're about where we were last October, mid-October. Um, and as you will remember, uh, after mid-October, uh, starting early November, our case rates started to tick up uh, quite precipitously. So unfortunately, we still all need to be very aware and very cautious uh, to prevent uh, any surge or even a swell. We don't want that to happen. Right, so the question is why are we opening up even more when we can't meet the needs? Um, it's a good question, and we're taking the lead, <coughs> excuse me, in the direction from the state. So that was not our decision. That was the state's decision. 
<coughs> excuse me. I didn't. I wanted to make a um, just add one more thing because I mentioned that 71,900 doses. Of those, about 49,000 are first doses. So all second doses were covered, and um, we have less that we needed to do for the next week. So there will be at least 49,000 doses of vaccine that will be opened up for appointments for next week, which is more than we've had in the past. And I wanted to make that very clear. So the question is, why is it important to wear a mask even if you've been vaccinated? The reason why it's important to keep wearing a mask is because not everyone has been vaccinated. The proportion of people who've been vaccinated uh, is not near the level of herd immunity. So that's number one. Uh, number two, while being vaccinated provides excellent, excellent protection against severe illness and death for those who are vaccinated, uh, it's not 100%, no vaccine is. So wearing a mask provides, gets you, you know, really close to perfect protection. Um, and it still protects others. Um, while most people who are vaccinated, the evidence is that you're very unlikely to spread the virus, it's not zero. And given that these variants are spreading, we really want to do everything we can to keep them from spreading and if everyone continues to wear their mask that will really help these variants from getting a foothold thanks the question is is the vaccine less effective for these variants of concern? The answer is this is still uh, under study. There are two types of data that, that we are collectively looking at. One is laboratory data, and there's some evidence from laboratory data that some of the vaccines may not perform as well with these variants. But more importantly, there's the what happens in real life when there's people who are vaccinated in a community where the variant is circulating, those data are obviously fairly incomplete but still coming in. The first question is, have vaccinations had an impact on case rates and the second is question is, what about booster shots? So we've seen uh, significant declines in case rates and positivity rates across the state, the region, and our county. This has to do with, uh, I think, both increase in natural immunity, a lot of people got infected, and we have increasing vaccination rates. So I think it's both. Um, there is conversation around booster shots our best guess is that SARS-CoV-2 uh, may require, you know, annual booster shots, something akin to getting your annual flu shot. We all may need to get our annual uh, SARS-CoV-2 shot. The question is, if one of these variants defeats the vaccine, aren't we back at square one? So I would say the good news is that we have uh, a variety of vaccines. Each of them work a little bit differently and may provide, uh, you know, uh, too soon to tell, but, but uh, different levels of protection. The key is, though, to overall tamp down the spread of the virus. And if we tamp down the spread of the virus, it will help everyone, right? It will help everyone. That's the key.
So why is there <coughs> what you observed as a lag in this county as opposed to some other counties? I don't think there is a lag. Um, we are using all of the vaccine that we are allocated. So w as I mentioned, we are only at one third capacity. So as we get the vaccine, we are getting it out. Uh, we, at least the data sh looking at our county system, we are utilizing our, uh, our capacity 99% of what the what the vaccine is uh, allocated to our community. So it's not an issue here, it's an issue of what we receive. And we have a big population here, and we're also focusing on our equity and our underserved population. So we're using everything that we get. And as we get more, we'll increase it even more. I think it has a, it's a supply issue. And so we're a county of nearly 2 million people, the largest in, in Northern California. And so the allocations are not um, going as far in our county as others. But again, as, as more is received, um, we will quickly increase that from, from that 35% on up and getting everyone done. question is around testing. We are seeing our, uh, a little bit of a slump in testing. Uh, the rates of testing are drifting down. They're drifting down faster statewide that they, than they are in the county, but this still is an area of concern. So the question is, when should you be tested? Let's not forget that testing is a really important strategy to prevent transmission of COVID. So if you are uh, working somewhere where you have frequent exposure to the public, you have frequent exposure to others, you should get tested regularly. How regularly depends on how much exposure you have, but once a week would be fantastic and it should be at minimum uh, once a month. Second, if you are exposed to someone who has COVID, you need to quarantine immediately and then get tested uh, around day seven is what we recommend. And if you have any symptoms of COVID, you should get tested. So we still have widespread testing available. There's plenty of access. There should be no barrier to getting tested. And if anyone has questions, you can look on our website, sccfreetest.org, and find out where you can get tested. The question is, do I anticipate there will be another surge? Uh, unfortunately, if we can't get more vaccine supply, and if we can't get uh, continued adherence to behavior change like masks, we do anticipate that we'll have another surge. I would hope that it would be a swell, uh, not a surge. I think vaccines are gonna help, but we need more supply so we can get it out faster. And we need people to just hold on for a little bit longer. Keep wearing your mask, delay your travel, don't, have, uh, don't indoor dine, don't go to indoor bars, don't host an indoor gathering at your home. Even if it's allowed under the state rules, don't do it. It's not safe, not yet. I think of a surge as large and a swell as mild. <laughs> so do I think the county will reach its goal of a, at least 85% by August? I do, I do. I'm, I'm optimistic that the production numbers are going up um, and again, vaccine will be flowing probably to a lot of our local pharmacies, also directly from the feds and to our uh, federally qualified health centers also. So vaccine should be coming in from a number of places. And I think by the time we reach the midsummer, we'll be, we'll be where we need to be. Right, so what percentage of Santa Clara County has been vaccinated? So we look at two things. We look at at least one dose, and that for 16 years and of age and older, those are the eligible criteria, and that is about 34%. So a third of our county 
that has had at least one dose. And if you look at how many of all of those um, of our entire county have completed the whole dose series, either two Moderna, two Pfizer, and one Johnson & Johnson, it's 20%, so one in five are totally completed in their dose. Yeah, so is there a problem with the supply and production in Johnson & Johnson? We don't know that. The, the state did get a very large amount of Johnson & Johnson allocated for next week, over 500,000 doses, and uh, we don't know yet whether that problem at the your production line is going to affect us into the future. The question is around travel and why people need to, to hold off. So there still is a travel advisory that the state has um, discouraging non-essential travel, discouraging uh, travel for pleasure, for example, discouraging travel for spring break, for example. The reason why we discourage travel is that travel exposes people who live in one area, go to another area, may pick up a new variant or a new strain and bring it back and then mix and things take off. I would say that our county historically, just because of the demographic mix, people have family from around the world, uh, people have work that takes them many different places, uh, we tend to see unusual infectious diseases emerge in our county. So it is really especially important that we pay attention and not travel right now. If someone does travel because they have to, it's essential, we urge people to one, wear masks consistently, and two, quarantine when you come back. That means you come back and you stay in your residence for 10 days. This question is around state and local restrictions and whether we would consider something local if there is a surge uh, or a swell. The answer to your question is very complicated. Uh, as we know, the larger a population that makes a change, the more effective it is. And so as the pandemic wears on, it becomes more and more difficult to do something locally that is more restrictive than surrounding counties and than the state. Uh, however, my job, whether I like it or not, is to do what I think will best protect the health of people living in our county. That's a too soon to tell. Thank you, everyone.